Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we're taking a look at a Legendre series problem. Okay, so this problem asks us to expand the following function in a Legendre series. Um, and it's this function here. Um, so this function is defined from negative 1 to 1. And up until, uh, up from negative 1 to a, it's 0. And then at a, it jumps up to 1. And uh, continues on from there to 1. Um, so uh, we're going to find the first term of the prob or the first coefficient by hand, and then we're going to do a trick for the rest of them. Um, so this is our formula here that will tell us, uh, or that shows us how to find our, um, our coefficients for the Legendre series, which is it's similar to a Fourier series um, in the sense that you're, you find a coefficient for each um, cosine or sine wave in that case. Um, but in this case, we're looking at the all of the Legendre polynomials, and um, we're finding coefficients in front of those. Uh, and when we add them all up, uh, we will get the our original function, just like you would with a um, Fourier series or a transform. Uh, so yes, we'll we'll do the first term here. Uh, so this is going to be. Um, if our L, uh, we're going to do the first term, so uh, P0. Uh, so L is going to be equal to 0, C0 times 2, because the, um, the bottom is just 1, equals, uh, and then where does this integral take place? This, the inside of the integral is 0 below A. Uh, and above A, it's just uh, PL, X. So we're going to go from a to 1 of p0x. And if we look down here, I have the first uh, couple Legendre polynomials written out. Um, p0x is 1. So it's from 0 to a dx. So when we solve this, we get c0 equals... 1 minus a over 2. So this is our first uh, our first coefficient. Um, if we had a fully determined function here, this would be a number. But since uh, our function is not just a function of x, but also uh, it changes with a, uh, we're going to have a's in all of our um, coefficients as well. Uh, so we could do this for all of the Legendre polynomials. Uh, but that would be way too long. It would take, uh, yeah, it would take too long. It's uh, inefficient. Uh, we're going to be using the um, relation in the book, uh, 5.8e, to simplify this a bit. So we're going to start out by writing this in terms of PL on this side. Um, so this is going to be 1 over 2L plus 1. And then we're going to have the derivative of the next Legendre polynomial in the sequence minus the derivative of the previous Legendre polynomial in the sequence. Um, and then from here, we're going to take the integral. Uh, and this is the integral with respect to x. We're going to take the integral dx. Um, so when we do that, we can set our... Um, our values, our limits of integration to be whatever we want as long as they're the same on both sides. Once again, we can do this because we know that these are both equal, so if we take the same integral to, with, this, with respect to the same thing, then we'll have the same result. So 0 to a, or not, a to 1, my bad, uh, plx dx. Uh, and since we're taking it with respect to x, not to l, this is going to remain a... Um, a constant multiple out in front. Um, and if there's one thing an integral is really good at, it's at undoing derivatives. So we're underivating, underivating these. Uh, so that just leaves us with, uh, and since they're added together and multiply by a constant, uh, we can take the integral inside and do it to each part. Uh, so it's going to be uh, L, uh, the next Legendre polynomial in the sequence minus the previous Legendre polynomial in the sequence. 
Uh, but since we did do that and we do have limits of our integration, we need to do that here. Um, so one other thing that we know about Legendre polynomials is that uh, they are one. When you put uh, any Legendre polynomial, when you put one in for x, it's going to be one. Uh, so at this upper limit, we have what, whatever this is um, times one minus one. So the upper limit doesn't matter because it puts a zero in here, so it multiplies through a zero. And then we're going to subtract uh, when we put a in for x. Uh, so when we put a in for x, um, I'll just go ahead and rewrite it down here. This side didn't change. Uh, but we can flip the minus sign uh, because we're subtracting. And what we get, this is still the same out here. And this is going to be uh, instead of x, it's a, because we substituted in a, and then it's going to be minus the next one, a. Okay, so this is, uh, well, this is what we have so far, but um, if, you if you look down here, uh, this, this here, this here is equivalent to this. Um, because remember that f of x is 0 below a, and it's uh, 1 above a. So what it does is it chops off that bottom part of the integral, which is what we see here. So we can actually uh, set this equal to cl here. It's going to be 2l plus 1 here, too. Um, so now what we're really concerned about is this side of the equation. So it's going to be CL. Um, the 2 is still over here. Uh, the 1 over 2L plus 1 cancels out. Um, but then it's still a 2CL over here because of the 2 on top. So we need to put that over here uh, with a 1 half. Uh, my first run through of solving this problem, I did not have that 1 half. And uh, it the result looked really kind of funky. <laughs> uh, so um, this is our this is now the uh, formula for the coefficient that's going to be in front of everything, or in front of each term. I mean, um, the reason why we had to do the c zero term by hand, uh, I suppose there's some way you could probably use this formula, but you run into the problem of c or the the uh, the what's the negative first uh, Legendre polynomial. Um, I found it just much easier to do the integral in that case. Uh, but now we have a, uh, a separate thing here that will um, tell us all of the rest of the uh, coefficients in front of the Legendre polynomials. Um, so, uh, in, in this case, so we, we'll, we'll, find, we'll find a couple terms of these. Um, so we have our C0 already. What's going to be our C1? Our C1 is going to be uh, 1 half of P0A minus P2A. Uh, since we don't know what A is, all we have to do is, or all we can do, is just substitute it in what we have over here. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 1 half times uh, 1, it doesn't change with a or x or whatever, uh, minus 1 half of 3, actually, uh, I'll just go ahead and put the 1 half in there, 3 halves a squared minus 1 half. Or you could rewrite this further. Um, 1 minus 1 half, so that's a 1 half. That's a quarter minus uh, 3 quarters a squared. Um, and we could find as many of these as we wanted if we had the Legendre polynomials written out. Um, but I only wrote out the first few. Uh, it's not too difficult to, there's more simplifying and all that stuff, but there's not more, it's not 
much more difficult to uh, do things that way. So we know um, our function is going to be approximately equal to uh, our first one here. So yeah, um, actually, I'll go ahead and write this fun this out first. Uh, the reason, the whole reason why we're doing this is because um, because we know that Legendre polynomials are a complete set of orthogonal functions. We know that uh, if we add up all of these from zero to infinity of our CL uh, times our PL of X, that these are going to be the same. Um, the proof is, you know, you can you can look at the proof if you want, um, but we we know that this is the case. So uh, we'll go ahead and write out the first few terms. We'll get to see more of them in a second. Um, so yeah, uh, our C0 times our P0, which is 1, so it's just that term, um, plus our C1 times our P1, which is uh, 1 quarter minus 3 quarters A squared times X. And then if we had more terms, it would just go on and on and on. Sorry about that. Right after I uh, finished recording uh, this, I realized I made a pretty uh, big mistake here. Um, so if you look, actually, this, uh, this minus sign here should not be a minus sign. It should be a plus sign because, uh, as you can see, it's, it, the Legendre polynomial itself it has a minus one-half in there. Um, but we're already taking the, you know, we're already subtracting it, so that should be a plus there. Uh, my bad. So that turns this into a three quarters, and uh, uh, it would turn this also into a three quarters. Um, sorry about that. The uh, graphs and stuff that are coming up in a little bit uh, still all should be correct. So let's take a look at how to visualize this here. Oops. Okay, here we go. Um, so here we have our function. You can see I can change this a value, uh, and then it's it's zero from one to a, and then it's one from a to one. Um, so actually, I'll show you first. Here are our our Legendre polynomials. The first one is just one. Then we have x. Then we have that one. Each of them increases in order, or uh, it it has one more uh, power of x in it than the previous ones do. So um, this is our approximation to the function if we have seven terms, or between zero and the between terms of zero and seven. Um, so you can see that it changes with a. Uh, it actually, it's not a bad approximation, uh, and it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be a bad approximation because this is one of the best uh, ways to approximate things that you can get. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, you can see here it's approximating this function with actually pretty simple polynomials uh, compared to other ways of uh, of solving these uh, problems. So I hope this was a, a instructive uh, way to visualize this, and uh, I hope to see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.